Hi everyone, Jason Hayes here, Product Manager for Trimble RealWorks. And in this video, we're going to take a look at a useful tool for visually evaluating the quality of your registration. The tool is aptly called the Registration Visual Check, and it can be found in all editions of Trimble RealWorks, including the free RealWorks viewer, which I'll be using today. The tool is accessed via the registration mode, and in the viewer, it can be found here, under the Home tab. In other editions of Trimble RealWorks, it will be found under the Registration tab. So to get started, I'm just going to go ahead and click on the icon to open the tool. And then, it's opening up over here in the Workspace, under the Tools tab. Now, it's laid out in different steps. The first step is to define a slice. The slice is what you're going to use to go and analyze how well each station or each scan is aligned with its neighbors. So I have two options to create a slice. One is to create a horizontal slice. It's pretty simple. I just click on the button and then I pick on the point cloud where I would like the slice to be created. So for example, I click there and now I've got a very nice slice to go through and look and how each of the scans are lining up with their neighbors. Now, in addition, I can create a slice perpendicular to the screen. So if I select that option, let's just change our view to the top. I can come and pick a couple of points on the screen, and it's going to create a slice perpendicular now to the screen. So this creates a very nice profile that you can go through and look at as well. Now the next thing that we need to do is go through and look at the properties of this limit box that we've created. So in this case, we can go through and change the shape. So I can click on any of these grab handles and move them around. And in addition, I can also change the position by panning. If I click on that, then I can pan along either of these three axes to go through and look at the scans. Now, if I wanted to, I could also use the option to rotate the limit box by clicking here and then rotating any of these three axes. And if I wanted to pick a new position for the center of the box, I would choose this option and then click where I would like the center of the box to be. Now, the next thing that you'll probably want to do is to change the thickness of your limit box. So when you're evaluating the point cloud, you'll want different thicknesses at different times. So to change the thickness, we just type in a value. For example, if I wanted it to be half a meter, we could type in 0.5. So if I want to take a measurement, we just bump up the size of the pixels so I can see this better. Then we could take a measurement by clicking on one side and then clicking over on the other side and you'll see that it's a half meter in thickness. Now, a lot of times it's a lot easier to see what's going on if you make a little bit thinner slice through there. I'm going to do that, and I'm just going to click Enter. And then it's just going to change the thickness of that limit box. Next, we want to go through and look at how we display the limit box. So in this case, you can see I'm looking at a portion of the building, but I may not know where I'm at in the building. So what I can do in step two is I can choose the option to display the clouds outside of the limit box. So now, as I pan along, I can see where the limit box is positioned in relation to the project. Now, sometimes you may not want to even see the limit box. So you can click here to hide or display the limit box. Now, the third option is just a quick view for going to different views of the limit box. So we can go and view the limit box from its top or its side or whatever. Now, in addition, we can also move the limit box by steps. So as we move along here, you can see that I moved my limit box away from the project. So now we can move the limit box along in steps. So if I click on these arrows to go forward or backward, it's going to move in the increments of this step. In this case, it's moving half a meter. So then I can go through a section at a time and inspect how the registration is coming together. And again, when I'm looking at this registration, I really want to look for an intermingling of the points. So if I make the pixels a little bit bigger, 
You can see here's two stations, the red and the green, and they're mixing very well. And over here we've got the blue and this kind of gray color. They're looking very well. And so that's what I'm looking for on these slices as I move along. And again, I can move the slice either by clicking here or I can also pan along the axis to quickly get to a specific area. Now, we can also go through and change the color of a specific station. So maybe if we find a station that we're worried about somewhere, maybe this green one, we can choose a new color, maybe yellow. And then we can change that station, clicking on it, so now it's the yellow one. So we know which one we're looking at or focusing on. Now the next thing that you might do is if you find an area of concern, maybe you're looking at your point cloud and everything is looking good, and then you say, wait a minute, I don't see my points mingling together, so to speak. It looks like two walls. That's something you really don't want to see in your registration. So what you may want to do then is isolate that specific area. So we can use this draw area tool. Then I'm just clicking once, moving my mouse to the extents of the area, clicking a second time, and then I'm just going to click done. And now I've changed the size of the limit box to fit that area. Now again, I can always go back up here to step one to modify the shape to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and then what I can do is I can save this to come back and look at later. So I might name this wall. Um, maybe this is on the southwest side of the building. And I can put some comments in here as well. So maybe say um, area of concern in registration. Okay. Then I can store this as a limit box, which I can open later. So I'm going to go ahead and click Store. And now if I wanted to bring that up later, I could come up here, click on this icon to open the limit box window. So I'm going to click there. Now I see all of my limit boxes that I've saved. I've only saved one so far. But if I was to close the tool, I could just come down here and double click on this to open that limit box. So, for example, I could go and make some changes to the registration to see if it was a little better, then open this limit box to see if this air specific area got better. Now, another thing that I could do is I could also go in and export this limit boxes, the set of limit boxes out. So, if I click on export, we can just name this uh, limit boxes uh, reg check. So we're just going to save that and just closing that. If I was to close the project then, let's just close this down and then reopen the project. You can imagine you send these limit boxes to a colleague that may be working on the registration or maybe you send the limit boxes via email to uh, your service provider that did the registration for you. They then could open their project and then, once the project's open, and then they could go in, and then in their limit boxes window, they could click on import, choose the limit box that you had sent to them, click open, and now they'll have the same limit boxes, with the same names, and the same comments. So then they can double click here to open the same limit box and go in and look at that area of concern. And that's really all there is to using the Registration Visual Check Tool. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'll see you on the next one.